Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. Now these are the last words of David, the oracle of David, son of Jesse, the oracle of the man who God exalted, the anointed of the God of Jacob, the favorite of the strong one of Israel. The spirit of the Lord speaks through me. His word is upon my tongue. The God of Israel has spoken. The rock of Israel has said to me, one who rules over people justly, ruling in the fear of God, is like the light of the morning, like the sun rising on a cloudless morning, gleaming from the rain on the grassy land. It is not my is not my house like this with God? For he has made me an everlasting covenant, ordered in all things and secure. Will he not cause to prosper all my help and my de desire? But the godless are, like all, are, are all like thorns that are thrown away, for they cannot be picked up with the hand. To touch them, one uses an iron bar or the shaft of a spear, and they are entirely consumed in fire on the spot. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is a portion of Psalm 132 and can be found on the inserts of your bulletin. We'll read by the traditional half verse. Lord, remember David. And all the hardships he endured. How he swore an oath to the Lord. And I will not come under the roof of my house. Nor climb up into my bed. 
I will not allow my eyes to sleep until I find a place for the Lord. The ark, we heard it was an Ephraim, Tom. Let us go to God's dwelling place. Arise, O Lord, into your resting place. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness. For your servant David's sake. The Lord has sworn an oath to David. A son, the fruit of your body. If your children keep my covenant and my testimonies, that I shall teach them. Their children will sit on your throne forevermore. This is a, a reading from the Revelation to John. John, to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood, and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even though who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. This was the word of God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. 
the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Illumine our minds, O Lord. Fill our hearts and lift our spirits with all that you hold for us within your word this day, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. This is Christ the King Sunday. It is the last Sunday of Pentecost. Next Sunday begins the season of Advent. And Almost right away, the Christmas season. This Sunday, though, is Christ the King. The day the church celebrates the Lordship of Christ, His reign and His omnipotent power as ruler of the universe. So what a strange place our Gospel lesson has us in this morning. Jesus, standing in Pilate's Hall, looking anything but kingly, Let's remember why Jesus is standing bound before Pilate. Now, Christ the King Sunday is half a year removed from Holy Week when episodes about the Passion story were last read as lectionary texts. And during the preceding night, Jesus has been betrayed by Judas and arrested in the garden by soldiers and officers of the chief priests. He's been bound and taken to the high priests, first Annas and then Caiaphas, for questioning. In the early morning, Jesus is removed from Caiaphas' house, and he's taken to the Praetorium, the residence and headquarters of the Roman occupation forces, for interrogation by the governor of the province of Judea. As the Gospels indicate, the chief priests have charged Jesus with blasphemy. Now, this matter is of no concern to Pilate. But because it is expedient for them that Jesus be put to death, the chief priests have delivered him to Pilate in hopes of getting a capital sentence. From Pilate's perspective, this petty matter should be returned to the local officials for judgment. He's not concerned with their religious squabbles. The Jewish people were free to worship their very strange, peculiar, solitary God as they pleased, so long as it helped to keep peace in the province. But this ecclesiastical issue has political implications, and these Pilate is pushed to investigate. The chief priests have apparently accused Jesus of claiming to be the king of the Jews, and that, if proven true, would be considered an act of treason. That would be punishable by death under Roman law. Well, Pilate is no fool. In his interrogation of Jesus, he inquires whether Jesus actually claims to be a king. The only kingship that Jesus lays claim to, he learns, is one of a spiritual realm. And having no jurisdiction over spiritual provinces, Pilate finds no reason to condemn the man and he attempts three times to release Jesus. Pilate is a worldly fellow. He knows how the world works. The strong rule the weak. The powerful judge the actions of lesser folks. Some things you learn by investigation or interrogation, while some things are just too philosophical to really know for certain. Pilate knows that this weak, beaten man who is before him is no ruler, not least in any sense that he's familiar with. Pilate knows 
that he holds the power in life of life and death over this prisoner. He knows also that the chief priests hold a certain power over their own people, but they have proved to be too weak to deal with this one decisively. And then, too, Pilate knows something about kings. Caesar is to be honored, even worshipped as supremely powerful. Ultimately, Caesar holds the power of life and death over all the persons within his wide realm. Pilate knows that Caesar's authority now rests upon his own shoulders. Now, all of this, he knows, is true. The only thing that Pilate does not know the answer to is the answer to the great question. And he voices it for all the peoples of all the generations. What is truth? It's the very next verse after our gospel reading this morning, after Jesus speaks of being the truth. What is truth? It's a question for the ages. We might expect that in the past 2,000 years since Pilate voiced that question, humanity would have found some clear answers. Yeah, the Dark Ages didn't exactly add a whole lot to the discussion. But then the Renaissance era certainly brought new human insights through art and rebirth of philosophy and exploration. And throughout the period of the Enlightenment that followed People strove to understand questions of nature and metaphysics. Our modern era brought empirical tools to bear upon virtually every question and successfully provided real answers to many more than we have ever known before. Now we are in what is known as the postmodern era. And still we seem to have no clear perspective on Pilate's question. Indeed, today, philosophers say that there is no such thing as a universal truth. This, even while scientists are searching for the final theory, or as it's better known, the theory of everything. What may appear to be true for one person, we are told, is not necessarily true for any other. In fact, Many people hold multiple contradictory truths all at the same time, and they are not particularly distressed by their incongruities. You know, it's like a multiple choice test where we can now believe that A, B, and C are all true all at the same time, even if to believe A means that B and C must be false, or to believe B means that A and C must be false, or to believe C means that A and B must be false. But hey, we can now simply believe them all because contradiction, we are told, is just one more way for one truth to relate to another truth. Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> You know, if you think people aren't thinking like that, just consider some of the statements that just came out of our recent election cycle. When pursuing large questions, we generally use the faculties that God has given us, art, critical thinking, and scientific method. These are the means by which we make sense of the world. These have worked really well for us from the Enlightenment until now. And yet, we are now hitting something of a theoretical wall. We may have indeed found the Higgs boson, better known as the so-called God particle. Uh, we're not certain just yet, but as we unpack what we have found this year, we are coming to know what happened one millionth of a second after the Big Bang but we still do not know what caused it. And the answer to that ought to have something to do with the truth. Now we have some ideas that might explain it, such as multiple universes, for instance. An idea that by its very nature is impossible to prove or disprove. It's sort of like trying to prove or disprove God. 
But by considering that very idea, we must confess that we are now entering into the realm of faith. Even scientists are recognizing it. And one side effect of this is that for the very first time in nearly 200 years, physicists and theologians are actually talking with instead of just at each other. Truth does have much to do with that which sparked the universe's creation. The truth is that the unexplorable, indefinable, ultimate cause of the universe is the author of life, the inventor of love, and the giver of every grace. Amen. We know this because we investigate with yet one more God-given faculty, not just art and science, but also the gift of faith enlightened by reason. It lies just beyond the reach of philosophy and a millionth of a second ahead of scientific inquiry. It eluded Pirate, Pilate, who was too world-weary to know the truth, though it walked right in in front of him and looked him in the face. It eludes many who seek after truth in various and contradictory ways. And yet it is within the grasp of every seeking mind. What is truth? It is Jesus Christ, the ultimate cause, the cosmic will, and the life force who sparked all creation. The actual truth of this pronouncement escaped Pilate. It escaped the religious leaders that had Jesus put to death. And it has continued to escape most of the world ever since. What is truth? For us, it is clear, Jesus of Nazareth is the sovereign who reigns over the throne of heaven and will come one day as ruler over all the rulers of the earth. Now there is much that we still do not know about the truth, even as believers. We ask questions of each other all the time. What exactly happens when we die? What is heaven like? More importantly, will it have pizza and beer and chocolate cake? <laughs> chocolate anything. What is God's precise will for my life? When will Jesus return? And of course, that perennial favorite that we see on bumper stickers, WWJD, you know, what would Jesus drive? We still have plenty of questions about the truth and the faith that reveals it. Like Pilate, we have questions about the truth, but we do not ask as he did with fatal resignation. We seek the answer by searching in the only manner that it can be found. We open our minds and our hearts to him who was crucified for us and who now lives and reigns as the ruler of our hearts and the ruler of all earthly rulers. What is truth? Speak, O sovereign Christ. Your very word is our answer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our trust in our sovereign creator by reciting the Nicene Creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things remain. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and the Father's He saw 
The prayers of the people can be found on page 9 of your bulletin. Let us pray for the church and for the whole world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess their, your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, give us all a reverence for the earth and for your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. We pray for those celebrating birthdays this week. Mavis Simon, Charles Robertson, Ginny Nestor, Brooke Melcher, Suzanne Howard, Jared Forth, and Martha Balsley. Lord, in your mercy, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We especially pray for Charles Robertson, Bob Silk, Tassie Justice, Stacy Dalton Hearn, Mary Gullickson, Bob Love, Henry Cobb, Naomi Gullickson, Plum Trent, Juanita Stutzenberg, Dan Applegate, Marion Seyfried, Mavis Simon, Helen Giles, Dud and Pat Apple, Otis Hutchinson, Brian and Heather, Ezra Robertson, Stephanie Robertson, Don and Nancy Gorick, Troy Franzosa, Bill Lighties, Danny Hayes, the Sizemore family, Alex Beaton, Jewel McMichael, J. John Bruno, Martha Sitton, Neil, Philip Dalton, Beth Smith, Pam Harding, Kay Spencer, Robbie City, Dwayne Knox, Michelle and Daryl Robertson, Robert Slaughter, Roy Flincham, Anne Montaigne, Rudy Foster, and Linda. Lord, in your mercy, and we also pray for all those serving in the armed forces of our nation, that they may be kept from harm and shielded in danger, especially Randy Williamson, Barney Briggs, Ethan Rogers, Heather Meyer Galana, Jericho Galana, Dominic Diaz, Amanda Altman, Michael McCloskey, Ben Shepard, Edward Morell, Wesley Welch, Spencer Wilson, Ralph Lee Clayton, Patty Bethay, Latham Smith IV, Katie Curran, Christina Bazzacco, Charles Spencer, Bo Bethay, Adam Wilson, Tommy Mancino, Chris Miles, 
and Jim Doniker. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our we commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left them. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and do not do it again. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. to tune in this morning at home, and we're glad that you're able to join with us in this worship time. I would uh, direct your attention to the announcements that are in the back of the bulletin because uh, something really critical is happening, and that is next Sunday is Advent. It's starting, and in two weeks, we are going to have uh, lessons and carols. Uh, it's to get us going and, and set up for the season. That's a, a special service of just the, the lessons that foretell the coming of Christ as well as those that tell of his birth and uh, carols that we're going to sing. We're kind of combining uh, Advent and Christmas uh, lessons and carols together just to get us all into that wonderful spirit of the season. Uh, and so we hope that you'll be able to be here, not this next Sunday, well, we hope you're here next Sunday, too, but the following Sunday uh, for Lessons and Carols. The, uh, uh, d by the way, just to get this out there, we, uh, one of the things that we do is festoon the sanctuary with poinsettias uh, just right around Christmas Eve and uh, Christmas uh, Day and probably, I guess the last Sunday of Advent. It'll be so, uh, and uh, if you want to have a point set in here, the, the uh, order sheet is in there. I do have one thing I do need to mention, and that is um, Mel Peterson's grandmother passed away on Thanksgiving. 
uh, Geneva Gibson Carter. She was 87 years old. Um, visitation is going to be this afternoon between 4 and 6 over here across the street at City. And the funeral will be tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. at Holy Infant. Uh, our, uh, Bill, I think you have an announcement. I have two, actually. I, uh, I, I said this morning, adult ed, next week we will start seeing the Bible and politics and gender in the third grade uh, just a moment ago. Maybe we ought to start with uh, Luke and politics and nativity. And then, uh, <coughs> uh, if I haven't done enough to be excommunicated yet, next week we'll take care of that. <laughs> with respect to the stewardship campaign, uh, they're coming in slow but sure. Let me tell you, the meetings will continue until we let out the cruise. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Uh, any other announcements? <laughs> Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom, and you are exalted as head over all. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of your own have we The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and light, you made us in your image, and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. And we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. And sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, 
by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, O oh, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. gifts of God, for the people of God.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you've given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia! Alleluia! Alleluia!